Hey everyone, it's Fox here from modelmaking.guru, back with part 3 of our build of the Trumpeter 135th Striker M1131, done in the style of Drebin 893 Striker from Metal Gear Solid 4 for emodels.co.uk. <sighs> Well, here we are with part three, and we're going to start on some of the uh, photo etch parts. Uh, so before we start, let's just find out how exactly you do photo etch parts. Otacon, I need your help again. I've got some pieces to glue on, but these aren't like normal pieces. This gear is some kind of solid metal. Solid metal gear? Hmm, that sounds strangely familiar. Anyway, what do you recommend? Well, Snake, those are photo etch brass parts. They're not too different from normal plastic in technique, but two things you'll have to do differently. They'll usually be flat, so you'll need to use a metal straight edge or a pair of flat tweezers or pliers to bend them into shape. Also, you'll need to use a different kind of glue. Plastic glue just melts plastic, but these won't melt, they're brass. So you'll need to use cyanoacrylate glue. Cyanoacrylate. Got it. Yes, but you might also know it as super glue. It's perfect for this test because you're sticking plastic to metal, and super glue sticks anything to anything else. But do be careful, Snake. It dries very fast and it's easy to get things stuck to yourself. Mm. I'll make sure to call you if I should glue my face to the table. Right, okay. So, now we've got that useful information, let's get on with this. Um, what we're going to do is, in the instructions, uh, you have a choice at this part, it's the first point where you have a choice. Uh, the suspension covers, you can either use the plastic pieces, uh, B83, 79, 82 and 80, or you can use the photo etch pieces, uh, A15, A17, A18 and A16. The plastic piece uh, is around here somewhere. I had it. I don't know where I put it. Never mind. The plastic piece is like a small square box that covers these suspension arms. Um, the brass piece, as you can see on this one, if you can see it in the light, is more of a, a flap that covers up the whole thing. Now I will say about this, as you can see I've done a couple already, uh, I will say about this, the instructions aren't horribly clear about exactly where you need to bend. Um, they show the bottom two tabs here as bent, but they don't really show anything else. Uh, they don't show the back part that you have to bend, and they don't show exactly where they go. So it is a little confusing. I had to do some online research to try and find where they're supposed to go. And I really couldn't find anything at all for this specific kit. So for all I know, these are actually upside down and the wrong way around. But it's the way they seem to fit best that I can make them work. So apologies to all you purists out there who know your strikers if this is the wrong way. Uh, it still looks good, so I'm quite happy with it. So what we'll do is we'll put on this last piece. Um, this two separate pieces sort of there's the, the two front uh, front middle axles and there's the two back axles the ones at the back are slightly different they have an extra tab um, but the process is the same so here we have our brass piece uh, it's been removed from the sprue uh, it's on the sprue exactly the same as any other uh, plastic part this is a very thin sheet of brass with the pieces etched into it they have small attachment points uh, and what you do is to separate them off, just use a, a nice, sharp, flat, chisel edged blade to just gently cut them like that. You don't need to put much force on. I'm using a small plastic, a piece of sort of laminated plastic here just because I can cut into it and it gives a nice hard surface. So I will very quickly, um, if I can find it, 
just file the bit that I cut because you do get some little bits of sprue. When you're doing brass parts, use a metal file to get rid of the majority of it. You can use any file, it'll just take a lot longer. Um, and then when you've done that, you can use any old file. You're sending sticks or you're sending blocks, just to smooth that out. And then a finer grade. A rough one, then a fine one, just to bring back the smooth edge. Okie dokie. So, first step, how do you bend brass? Well, as long as it's not required to go over any kind of compound curve or curved shapes, um, all you really need is a metal ruler and a pair of pliers. Most photo etched parts have convenient grooves etched into them so you know where the hinge is that's going to bend. Now for this one, again, it's not clear on the instructions what you're supposed to do. These two flaps here, tabs, bend outwards this way towards me, towards you, uh, and they act like little feet, like you can see hopefully on, uh, let's have a look, hopefully oh, you can see here, that's the little flap at the bottom, and the other tab at the other side is that one, I don't know if you can see it because the light, but it kind of goes round the back, it bends round and behind, so I kind of had to figure that out, so although I applaud the kit for giving you the brush, parts the instructions aren't that clear so just be careful when you're doing them so for this one this is the flap at the back so it needs to bend let me put you in the light this is the flap at the back so it needs to bend that way going behind itself and these two need to bend outwards and this extra flap uh, I wasn't sure where it went so I bent it towards me so it's like a zigzag pattern so to bend a piece of brass very easy uh, start it off, you've got the, the crease here, that it's going to, the weak point, so I want it to bend backwards. So on the other side, away from the curve, I'm going to just start the bend very gently. And the little groove should help bend it round, should make it easier. So you can see there it started to bend. And then on this bit on the end, I'll bend that back. So it's going to come back towards me. And it's small enough that I can actually use the, the edge of the pliers as the, the bending edge. So I'm going to bend that to 90 degrees. You can see there, hopefully. Uh, I'll do a photograph of this and put it into the video when I've done this so you can see what I'm actually talking about. So this one needs to bend that way. Now here I'm going to use my straight edge, just to, because I already started to bend it, I can use a nice metal ruler. You can use anything for this, as long as it's solid and has a perfectly straight edge. Bring that up so you can see it. Uh, so all I'm going to do is just literally push that, go backwards and forwards so it's a nice, regular, smooth 90 degree curve. Just bend it to its 90 degrees. Then it's bent that one back again, so I need to bend that one. So it's going to go like this. This one then needs to come back out, so I'll just bend that back again. So you see you've got a nice little, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, nice little zigzag shape now. Just bend that a little bit more. Unfortunately, this white tablet's throwing my white balance out, so everything looks a bit weird at the moment. There we go. Uh, so that's going to sit like that. These pieces I need to bend towards me, because they're going to go flat. And again, they're small enough that I can get the pliers to act as the straight edge. So I can just do it with the pliers. Uh, I might stupidly shake your hands today. Okay, so bend those. It's a bit too far. So we have this bit bending backwards and then zigzagging back, and these two little feet. Now, theoretically, this should fit here. There is a little groove behind the uh, shock absorber, so 
I can kind of feed it into there. The difference with this piece is this piece has this little tab at the bottom. The other two front ones don't have that. So this doesn't quite fit into the hole. But basically, it should sit. Oh, so fiddly. Sit like that. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, so the trick with brass parts, when you're gluing plastic parts, as I've said many times before, it welds the plastic together, it melts it. Brass obviously isn't going to be melted by glue, and plastic can't melt into brass. So you have to use cyanoacrylate or CA glue. Uh, you might know it as super glue. Basically it sticks anything to anything. Uh, now you can use bog standard, get it from the hardware store super glue, uh, but be wary, some super glue is thick and when you say put a cocktail stick in a blob of it, it will make lots of strings and hairs of super glue. You don't want that because that stuff's horrible and goes everywhere. You want a thin super glue. Ideally if you can get uh, a, a proper CA glue for modelling, such as eModel uh, supplies, um, or uh, I'm here I'm using Tamiya's uh, CA glue which comes in this handy dispenser. You press the two buttons and glue comes out. So, let's get this done. Uh, right, so CA glue sets quite quickly. Try not to get it on yourself because it will stick you to whatever you're sticking to something else. So I'm going to put some small amounts of glue on the edges. Uh, you can do it with a cocktail stick, but these are small enough. I can just do it straight with the dispenser. So a small dot of glue there. Probably too much. A small dot on there. And on here, I'm going to put it on the edge and on this little tab. And it's simply a case of, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I need to give them putting it in priority. Put it down. Hold it in place for a second. You can get a thing called Kicker, which is a, a spray that can accelerate super glue adhesion and setting. But because I've got to hold this in place, there's no point in doing that. And I haven't got any anyway. That's not quite straight, so I need to straighten that. Push it gently into place. You have got some freedom to move it around while it's setting. Just push it down with a cocktail stick. Hold it for a second. And I know you can't see this. You do have, as I say, some freedom of movement for a few seconds. Uh, and then if when you've got it in place, if you want, you can clamp it or push it in place. Hold it for a second or two, and it will then stay where it's put. Let's clamp them with the pliers. Let's push that one in to make sure that's stuck. And that's it. That's now in place. Give it a good half hour just to set fully. Uh, now I've done the other four. This one you can see here has gone a bit messy. There is some uh, glue residue. Lighting's a bit terrible, but there is some glue residue here, you can see. So I'm going to have to clean that up. It went a bit wonky and I couldn't get it on and I had the tab the wrong way around. Um, so yeah, so those parts are done. So very easy to do. Just take your time with them. Be very sparing with the super glue. Uh, as I say, the instructions aren't exactly clear as to how exactly you bend them and where they go. So as far as I know, these could be completely the wrong way around. Uh, upside down or back to front or uh, I've not been able to find any good reference material but I like the look of them and as always you do have the option of uh, using the plastic parts instead but I don't think they look as good apparently this is a more modern variation of the of the suspension covers um, so that's those done I'm going to leave those to dry for a little bit what's next next up we have uh, so we've done the suspension covers we've done the suspension next up is step seven which is uh, wheels Doo -doo. And I'm not going to put the wheels on um, because I'm going to put them on last once I've done the painting and weathering. Uh, and then we make a start on the upper hull. So I'll go away and let this dry. When we come back, we'll stick those wheels together. OK, back in a moment. And we're back. OK, the uh, photo etch parts on the suspension covers have uh, had time to dry. So they're all nice and secure. Next step is the views. Uh, now there's eight of them and they're very simple to make there's three parts uh, let's have a look we're on step seven for those of you following along um, very simply three parts front and back 
and an extra sort of rim around the wheel nuts and then the tyre. Now it is actually optional whether you want to put the rim on the wheel. You can just do the front and back. I've made one so far, I'll show you. Uh, this is the wheel. If you can see that, if it's in focus, I have no idea. This is the wheel. Now I'm actually going to, I'm actually including the rim on the wheel because I've looked at the images of Drebin Striker and it does seem to have the rim on it. So of course I will include the rim. Um, now there's a little bit you have to do. It is optional if you want to add them. Not all variants of the Striker had them. Um, so all you need to do, a little bit of uh, drilling to do if you want to use that rim. This is the rim. You won't be able to see that. That's the rim. And there's two little locating pegs here. Now on the front side of the wheel, the bit that you would see, there's two little countersunk holes. There and there. Uh, they're not drilled out by default because you may not want to have them. And if you don't have them, you don't want two holes in your wheel. So uh, all you need to do is get, get yourself a pin vise uh, and drill them out. This is my trusty pin vise. Um, I'm using a tiny little bit that I found that's a, just of exactly the right size. The one on the other end, the big, the big ass one, that's what I use to drill holes in display stands. So that always stays in there because it's always the right size for my brass rods. So dead simple. Um, I've not sanded the wheels down yet. I'll do that when I've uh, got them all on built. Very straightforward. Simply. Uh, drill a hole out with into those two countersunk holes. So I'll, I'm doing this, I'm angling myself so you can see. So I'm just going to, very gently, doesn't take a lot of effort. Pop, and there it goes through the wheel. It's good that they include these little countersunk holes because a lot of models will just say, hey, drill a hole here. So oh, where? Where do you want me to put this hole? Oops. Just clean those a little bit. Sometimes if you get a bit of schmutz around the edge, just go back the other way. And it cleans out the hole properly. Try not to actually drill the hole next to the hole. So that's that done. Two nice holes. Dead simple. Uh, apply a little bit of glue to this outer rim. So do that. As always, not using too much. This is just Humbrol Liquid Poly. Slot those together. I'm going to try to line up the little bits of flash from the sprue because I'll sand these once I've built them all. And glue down the middle. Just to make it set even more. Oops, scridge. So that's those two stuck together. And then the little, I don't really know what this is, the little bit that goes around the wheel nuts. Uh, just locks in with the two studs. So I find the easiest way, rather than make a mess on the wheel, is just to pop it in place, fiddle around a little bit till it goes in. And then apply a tiny amount of glue just inside and on the outside just so it can run into all the little grooves and it'll seep into where the little studs are just get the glue on there and just press it down squidge press it down and you have a wheel there done how simple was that uh, now the beauty of this kit is, put the lid on my glue so I'm not breathing the vapours, the beauty of this kit is that the tyres are actually rubberized. well they are rubber, strangely enough, um, so you can leave the tyres off, I'm going to leave the tyres off till I've done everything else, uh, just because I want to get everything on the, on the vehicle painted and weathered, um, and then stick the wheels on, I'll, I'll paint these separately, then put the wheels on. Um, well, I want to get everything painted first, although I don't think these actually rotate, so I could just... I don't really want to put the tyres on when the wheels are on the vehicle, because I don't want to be pulling and pushing and pop the wheels off. So, I'm going to keep these separate, get everything painted up, 
then put the tires on the wheels. Now I'm also going to try and figure out how to flatten these tires because when a car is sat on a surface it doesn't have a perfectly round tire it's flattened a bit where the weight of the vehicle is so I may look at have an investigation to whether I'm best to sand that or cut it or however you do it. They're very nice tires actually let's have a look at those. They're very nicely detailed. Uh, even to the uh, Michelin name on it and the model and pressure information which is quite cool. I'm guessing they're not the kind of tyres you have on your car. Uh, so you have to make eight of those. So yeah, the, it just goes on the tyre like that and pops in. And you can pop it out again. But I don't want to do that while it's on the, the vehicle because that might just get a bit, a bit fiddly. So I've got to make eight of those. Um, so I'll go away and make those eight. And then when we come back, I think we're making a start on step eight, which is the back plate of the vehicle. Uh, so, back in a moment. And we're back. Okie dokie, I got a bit more carried away uh, than I intended. So I've actually completed the back, almost completed the back panel now. Uh, I'll give you a show. Uh, mostly plastic parts, let me get a pointy stick. Mostly plastic parts. Uh, this lighting's not very good in here. Um, so you've got the, the actual panel itself is three parts. This part, the inner panel and then the door. Hinges stuck on. There's some extra little hooks and eyes that are added on. Two more of those little hooks that you're not supposed to glue so they can wobble around but I'm painting over it anyway. And then the interesting bit is these um, jerry can holders. Now again, you have the option of using the plastic parts or the photo etch parts. I use the photo etch parts. Um, you basically, it's two pieces to each, well, this one's two pieces. There's the main box itself, which simply is a flat piece that folds up and the side comes up and the back comes up and makes the box. And then this little square piece on the bottom that glues on, just to give it some shape. And with this one, uh, it's a square piece again, but then you have two little brace bracing brackets here I don't know if you can see those two little triangle pieces and they just glue on and that holds it in place uh, and lastly you have the uh, this strap which is just a photo etch part now it's supposed to actually feed into the little holes here uh, but I couldn't get it to go in at all because the jerry cans in the way so this one's just glued in place on this side it's not not quite as neat but it's glued in place uh, and that gives a strap. If you didn't want to use the photo etch for this strap, you could just use a thin strip of plastic card. That would work just as well. Uh, but I decided to use the photo etch. Now it did get a bit messy because this front panel on here actually snapped off, so I had to glue it back in place. It looks a bit scruffy and messy, but I'll be able to sand that down and make it nice and neat again. With photo etch and super glue, you do end up with a lot of mess sometimes. Uh, I hope this is all in focus. You do end up with a lot of mess sometimes, so there is a bit of cleanup required afterwards. So that's that done. All that remains to, on that one is to add these two little tiny pieces here that you probably can't even see to the sides of the uh, jerry can holders. Uh, and then we can stick it on the back of the main hull. So um, you'll be able to see much of this. But we'll get this done. Now on the plastic piece there are little locating holes. I'm just going to put a little bit of super glue on my board here. And I'm going to very carefully pick this up in the tweezers. Apply a little bit of glue to the bottom. I hope I've got enough on that. Uh, might not. This may be easy just to do directly from the directly from the nozzle. Hoping I don't glue it to the tweezers, which I have. Stick that on on the side wiggle it around a bit so you do get a few seconds of play time so that's that on so that's 
that side. Unfortunately, the lighting is that you probably can't see any of this. That's the side piece done there. If you can see that, I don't know if you can. Okay, then we'll do the other side. Same again. Do -do -do. I did just stick the cocktail stick to myself. Hooray! So try and avoid doing that if you can. Go on the side here. So there are locating holes for the plastic part, but obviously there aren't for the for the photo etch part. So just gently push that so it moves. Super glue is weird. Sometimes it can set straight away immediately, and you're just absolutely knackered if it's not lined up. And sometimes sometimes it doesn't stick at all. And sometimes you get a few seconds to to adjust your piece. But you can never quite be sure which. Let's try that one again. Spot on. Done. Now, if you're wondering about the jerry cans, um, let's just change the focus. If you're wondering about the jerry cans, as in all model kits, the jerry cans are two pieces front and back, uh, and you get a line down the middle, the join line. All I've done to seal those is simply wear the two pieces glue together, use some liquid glue quite generously in there to fill the hole, the gap. It'll run down into the gap. Then I let it dry for a little while. Uh, I then scraped it with the modelling knife. So imagine, let me just put the top on my glue. Hang on. Imagine that this is the jerry can. Seam line down the middle. So I apply some liquid glue, let that dry for an hour or so. Then I get my modeling knife. I think I've shown you this before anyway. And because it doesn't line up quite perfectly, I'll just run the blade down along the edge to bring both to bring both sides of the jerry can level with each other. Do that and then sand it to smooth it off and because the glue's gone down into the crack you've got the cracks actually filled with glue so you get a nice smooth edge so you get this nice smooth edge on the jerry cans uh, and it doesn't look at all like two pieces stuck together the knife sanding technique is actually very handy and you can use that quite a lot uh, where there's very slight seam gaps now, interesting on this kit they give you the interior of the door as well as actually textured if you wanted the ramp down however the kit itself doesn't actually come with an interior so it's obviously designed with the idea of a third party aftermarket interior in mind. So that's the back plate done. All that remains is to apply this to the back of the fuselage. See fuselage? No, hull. Hull's a better word. Back of the hull. So no locating pins, but there are two little corner pieces here. And these just lock onto those. So nice and simple. I'll just double check I've not missed anything. Uh, no. So nice and simple. This will just glue onto the back. So let's get that done now. I will put the glue on this piece, it'll be a bit easier. So I'm just going to glue it on here first. Oops, I'm going to soften my brush first. Put some glue on here first just to get it going. This is just so I can stick it in place. So just get that in there. So if you think a decent angle it might be better. That goes on there like that. Give it a second just to hold it. So you can see it just locks in place. Just give it a second to stay in place. Get more glue, oops, get more glue, I have to throw my glue brush everywhere. And I'm just going to run this, now this is inside the vehicle so it doesn't matter if I make a mess with the glue, I can be quite careless with it. Uh, run it on the side there. Give it a press. And on this side. I did wonder how this would fit together actually because there were no real locating holes or anything like that so I was like how's that going to work? But it actually fits together just about oh, with some sliding and some coming off 
Excellent. Fits together nicely. Let's pop it in there. Probably will be some sanding cleanup once this is done. Just to get rid of all the glue marks and lines. So we'll just get that in there. Run that along the edge here, just to make sure it's seated. As I say, because this is inside, I don't mind if there's glue everywhere, so I can get quite messy on the inside. And that is our back panel done. You kind of take it on faith that it's going to fit, because again, there's no locating holes, so. Hmm. So you've got some splooge coming out here, so I'll probably... Oh, I don't think you could see any of that, could you? Sorry. Uh, there's some splooge coming out here where the glue's come out, so I'll just sand that down and clean it a little bit. But that is our back plate done. So, I think that was all off camera then, so I do apologise. So, I think... Where are we in the instructions now? Uh, okay, so I have to add this little corner box. And I've just remembered, going back a couple of steps, I have to add these little storage boxes on the underneath as well. Uh, B84 and uh, what's the one I need to put on? That is... Okay, those two that go on the back here are the ones I made earlier. Where are they? There they are. These two little puppies. So, they go, how do these go on then, let's have a look, so these go on, it suggests, oh I see there's a little hole, a little hole at the end here, and I'm locating, oh, dropping everything, locating pin on the back of that, so we'll just try that on as a dry fit. And it fits like a glove. I've moved the camera so I keep forgetting where it is. Uh, so that fits like a glove on there. So I'll just glue this in for you. Apologies for the darkness. See if I can adjust that slightly. There we go. So it's just going to fit into this hole. Uh, really I'm fumbling like a loon today. So it's going to be... I've just done it and I've just forgotten it already. So it's going to go that way. Et voila. So let's glue that on. I can use the big brush for this. I'm not going to use the small glue brush. Let's put the glue on. And action attach. some glue in the corner this should hold it in place it's very hard to make sure you can see this while I'm doing it that one let's do the other one got a little brush in my hand I may as well use that okay it just clicks on that nicely get it glued in A bit down there. And that is that bit. Right, so those two are on the back. Wow, that is really dark. Let me. My lighting is all over the place today. 
Okay, let me try something. One moment. Won't make any difference. That's a bit better. Okay, so we've got these back pieces on. We've got the back plate on. Apologies if that's all really dark and you can't actually see anything. Right, let's get these other two little boxes on. So those are the two little pieces were uh, B84 times two. So where is my B sprue? B sprue. B sprue. Right, so here's B. B84 is 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 is, is. beautiful there there's one here one here let's just pop these off oops if you're wondering why i seem so ham fisted all the time it's purely because i'm conscious of keeping things on camera and i'm having to basically assume very strange positions to do it That was done. We'll give them a quick sand just to get rid of any flashy bits. Where did we just cut? We did there. Shouldn't be anything too significant. And we've got there. So, as always, starting with a coarse grade. Finding it with a medium grade. And then a fine grade if I can find it. Where's my. There it is. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, as some of you know, I like to make sci fi models. And especially. I like to make Star Wars models. Now up until now, the absolute final word in Star Wars models has been fine moulds kits. Uh, they are absolutely fantastic. However, for any of you out there who like to make fine moulds kits, the sad news is that unfortunately fine moulds lost the license to manufacture them uh, as of the end of this year. And the license for Star Wars has now gone to Bandai Namco, or Bandai. Um, and I think those kits are starting to come out in November. Now I've seen I've seen some shots from Tokyo Model Show. And they look alright, they look pretty good. I mean I've, I've not got a great deal of experience with Bandai kits. I know they make a lot of Gundam kits and Mecha kits and things like that. Um, from what I've seen so far, they look quite good. I've seen the 172nd, the 148 scale X-Wing. And they look alright, they look a bit chunky. Panel lines are a bit deep and strange. And from what I understand, they are actually all snap fit kits, pre-coloured. Now normally to me that's anathema. I wouldn't touch them with a barge pole, just checking for any marks. Wouldn't touch them with a barge pole, but they look actually not too bad. And I've made a few of the Revell easy fit kits, which are... Not the best kits in the world, but they're okay as a starter to, to do a custom job. So, yeah, I'm not sure about the new Bandai kits. Um, they do a lot of figures, but I don't do figures. They, so far they've shown an X-Wing, a Snowspeeder. Uh, which bit am I gluing on here? Hey, yeah, there we go. X-Wing, a Snowspeeder. Where did this go? There it goes. And some other... Uh, They've also shown a big three foot long Star Destroyer, which, which if they do make that, would be absolutely fantastic. But, so I'm in kind of cautious mode at the moment. I don't know how well these are going to come out, these kits. So we'll have to wait and see. So, it's a bit of a shame, because I really like making the fine moulds kits. They're wonderfully made. But unfortunately, your only option will be to get the Bandai kits. Um... So one of the reasons I'm saying all this um, is if you fancied making yourself a fine moulds kit, I would recommend you get hold of one sooner rather than later. 
because as soon as they go out of production, and, and trust me, all the people that make Star Wars models rave about fire molds, as soon as the production stops, or as soon as everybody runs out of stock, which I think they already have anyway, the value of those kits unmade is going to go up ridiculously. My um, Millennium Falcon, 172nd scale Millennium Falcon, was about 300 quid. But when it, from time to time, it went out of production, and when it did, that price went up to six, seven hundred quid for the kit, not for the finished models, just for the kit. So you can expect kits like that, fine molds kits like that, are going to go up massively. So do, uh, if you want to get one, I'd recommend trying now rather than wait until the new year because they are superlative. Now, I think. I could be wrong, and I hope I'm not, but I think E-Models do still have some of the um, 148th scale snow speeders in stock. So if you've never tried a fine moulds kit, and you like Star Wars, really would urge you to go and buy one. Go and get one. I don't know how many they've got in stock. There may only be a couple. Uh, but once they've gone, they will have gone permanently. So if you ever fancied doing that, I really would strongly recommend going on to emodels.co.uk now and snapping that up. It's a beautiful little kit, lovely amount of detail, and you'll be forever grateful. Um, just keep an eye out for some of the trip up parts in fine molds kits where you can easily make do things wrong uh, I have got a write-up either it's on there or it's coming on modelmaking.guru of the snow speedy kit so if you're gonna get one and you want to make sure you do it right check out modelmaking.guru uh, in the next few weeks and there should be a write-up there of the snow speeder right that's those two glued on uh, I think that will do it for today it's been a bit higgledy piggledy I kind of uh, I've only had one cup of coffee today so I'm a bit all over the place and I had a few things go wrong with the brass parts off camera. Um, so hence it's a bit messy, but that'll all clean up nicely. So we have done the lower hull. I think we're done now. We've got the wheels done. Wheels all done. Yay. Uh, got all the back plate done. Do, do, do. So next we will actually start on the upper hull. So that will do it for today. Um, let me clear all this nonsense off the sign. Um, hopefully I'll be a bit more organised next time. Uh, thanks very much for watching this episode. Uh, as always, go along to emodels.co.uk. Um, brilliant store. Anything you need, they'll have it. Anything they don't have, you won't need it. Uh, especially if you want Star Wars kits, go and check out their um, fine mold snow speeds. They also have a selection of the Revell Easy Kit um, pieces as well which um, are limited in detail, but they are really good fun to build. The Jedi Starfighter is quite fun to build and actually paint properly. Uh, fun to build and paint properly. And the Land Speeder can make a brilliant uh, piece. I did a whole diorama using that little Land Speeder, um, which is really actually quite simple, but dead nice if you customise it. Uh, if you do make the land speeder, bear in mind it says it's 114th scale. It's actually about 124th scale. So if you're putting a figure with it, it's about 124th figure is about right. Because uh, the figures that come with it aren't very good, so you wouldn't want to use those. So yeah, go along to your models .co .uk if you've not been there before. You get everything you need. Um, also go along to their Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash emodelsltd. Uh, as you know, I always say it's a brilliant little uh, community. Post up pictures of your work and show it off. Give people feedback on theirs. E-models will also keep you updated with products coming out, new uh, products in stock. Just just go and hang out, basically. Uh, me and Ted will be in the comments every now and then being a bit weird because we're just silly. Uh, also, Ted Hawksworth's build of his Hurricane, the FX124 scale. Have I got the scale wrong there? I can't remember now. The big-ass Hurricane he's making. Or is it a type? I don't know. It's a big-ass plane. I don't do planes, so... It's big ass airfix, the latest kit they release, and it looks fantastic. Ted's building that, and he's posting his videos up of that build, same as I'm doing mine. Um, 
but yeah, go along, check it out. Also, um, don't forget to go and check out my website, uh, www.modelmaking.guru. That's dot G-U-R-U. -U. Uh, I've got my blog where I post up write-ups occasionally when I get time. Uh, galleries of the builds and occasionally have pieces for sale as well. There's some up for sale at the moment. So if you want to go and check them out, let me know. Uh, but that will do it for this week. Uh, next time we'll crack on with the upper hull um, and we'll start getting this thing done. Uh, I might keep jumping ahead like I do and do bits because I don't want to focus too much on the build too much. I mean, because it's lots of little tiny pieces and it's hard for me to film it, uh, as you no doubt seen from this video. Um, so I'll do little bits and then we'll jump onto the painting and then we'll, I'm still thinking about doing a diorama. So we'll see how that goes. And um, also, if anybody knows where I can get, here's a question for you. If anybody knows, and Ted's been looking for me as well, where I can get a 135th scale Persian rug. Uh, not in, ideally, I don't know, I know you can get them on paper. I haven't got a printer, so I can't print them out. Um, ideally a fabric one, very thin, or very good paper that's going to be glued and moulded to shape. But basically I'm looking for a 135th scale Persian rug. Um, if anybody knows where I can get one, put a comment at the on the video, either on the Facebook page or the YouTube channel, because I'm looking for one. And anybody who's played MGS4 will know where I'm going with that, so... Uh, we'll, we'll just see. But yeah, anyway, check out next time. We'll crack on with the upper hole. But until then, as always, adios amoebas. <laughs>